There's a very striking image in the book of why the poor don't rise up and reject the condition, the, the terrible material conditions in which they're living. And you, you write about the, the rooster coop, and that's a sort of important metaphor, I think, for, for the reason why the status quo is maintained. Right. The poor in India, when, when, when you speak to them, tend to use animal metaphors a lot. Um, I, I think partly because uh, you know, animals play a much greater role in, in day-to-day life in India. You're surrounded by you know, pigs, and goats, you know, and, and donkeys. Uh, monkeys and, and everything really but particularly um, you know the, the poor have a sense that life is, is quite brutal and, and almost bestial and so when you talk to them the metaphors they use tend to be animal metaphors so I was conscious of, of, of capturing that in Balram's course um, the, the, the rooster coop is something you'd see if you traveled in India this extraordinary coops in which uh, roosters and chickens are just stuffed in uh, I mean dozens just packed in and, and, and so pe- people can pick and choose the metaphor here is you know, is used to to try and, and sum up the experience of the working class in India, the servant class particularly, um, because every morning in India you just notice these thousands, hundreds of thousands of men and women streaming into work, and and they they live in the slums or in terrible conditions, and they they travel in terrible conditions, and they get to work uh, in the houses of the middle class and the rich, and yet they never revolt. You know, they 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 just. They seem to accept things so placidly, and this fascinated me when I when I came back to India, as to why why such a system worked. Because um, when I'd lived in New York, there there is a perception that there's a link between economic deprivation, between poverty and crime, that uh, a great disparity in wealth would lead to to high levels of crime. Um, and and then I had a friend come in from South Africa, and he he was asking why there was so little crime in India because there was such uh, disparities in wealth and and this in South Africa had led to crime and um, it struck me that so many Indians are, are so many of the servant class are in that rooster coop and they're sort of tied in by various social forces that bind them to the system and uh, and serve as a disincentive to crime and my, my novel is a kind of attempt to understand what, why that rooster coop works and why these people uh, play along in a system from which they get so little by way of material reward and Balram eventually does escape and the book is a narrative of describing how he escaped from the rooster um, Right. but it, there was a terrible price that he had right, to pay. Right, the, the price is you know, the uh, sacrifice, the literal sacrifice, I mean you know, uh, a sacrifice of your, of your family and, and um, a, a traditional Indian sense of self is, is very deeply tied into his family. He almost can't, uh, he or she can't think for himself or herself without thinking of, of the family and, and to sacrifice the family uh, to, to, to gain his freedom, he has to sacrifice his family in a very terrible way. And that's the cost of, of Balra making his freedom. It's, it's also the cost of you know, something you have to abandon when you make this sudden shift from, from the traditional world to the modern age. In a sense, Balram has literally sacrificed his family, but it's, it's something on, on a less dramatic level that uh, every Indian has to do when, when he or she leaves the village and comes to the city. To truly live an urban life, to make the transition from from the Middle Ages to modernity, you you have to to cut your your ties to your family, to some extent or the other. Uh, Balram has done this in a more dramatic way, but I think you know to some extent the links to the family are getting severed, and as they are, the entire rooster could, could come apart. So I see this in a sense as a cautionary tale. What 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 my narrator is is that was a white tiger. He's he's unusual for his time. Very few servants actually, you know, kill their masters to take their money in India. It's, it's still remarkable, you know, the, the endurance of the servant class in India is just heroic. But uh, I, I see signs that this endurance may be coming to an end, and and the family bonds that held people to their to their servile posts, you know, may be fraying. And so, what my narrator has done today may be something that that more and more do on a larger scale in the future, and and that this could lead to greater social unrest. One thing which I shouldn't fail to emphasise is the book is also very funny. There are many scenes right. in the book, particularly about middle-class Indian life and shopping malls and aspiration right. and material things. Uh, the the humour was again uh, something you know, something that I was trying to do, and perhaps you don't see in many many books of this kind in India because they either tend to be books written on India tend to be either very earnest. I mean, they can be very well written and earnest, or they tend to be um, funny in a kind of magic realist way kind of over-the-top, satirically funny. I wanted a kind of humor that was grounded in Indian social reality because often humor is the only way to... to you either have to laugh or cry at some things in India. 
uh, when you see a, you know, a, a malnourished rickshaw puller in Delhi, you know, uh, who's, the back of whose rickshaw has a sign saying, want to lose weight, you know, speak mm. to me. And, and you know, when you see that, you, my initial reaction is one of just, just uh, horror. But then it struck me that humor was a way um, both of telling the story and of controlling my own reactions, my own, um, my own feelings towards things would, would veer towards the extreme if they weren't controlled by humor. So it was an outlet both for the, um, for the reader and for the writer.